everybody, let's stand on our stand up on our feet, get ready to worship the Lord. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. We are going to worship and praise a God who can do the impossible. He is unstoppable. Can we get a good amen? Amen. We're glad to see those. Uh, welcome those who are watching online. Join with us wherever you are today, and let's worship our great God. He is great, and the scripture says, greatly to be praised. Let's praise him in a great way today. and praise. God, you are unstoppable.
say that's your presence. with your faith and with 
atmosphere for you to move, God. We create an atmosphere of worship for you to have it, Lord. Come on, let's see it out. I know. of your heart today. Your presence, nothing like your presence. It's an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Amen. Is that your prayer this morning? We say come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit.
chosen I know who I am I know what you spoke
let that rest on your heart. Let that truth settle in. He's on.
like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I'm surrounded by you. You raise up a standard. stirred in the spirit today that the Lord says if you would look under the hills from where your help comes from take your eyes off of these earthly situations and circumstances shut the voices of doubt and despair off cut those voices off and let the voice of faith arise lift up your eyes to the hills and see that the armies of the Lord are surrounding your enemies that they're going before you and as you worship and as you praise the Lord of hosts, he will fight your battle. As David stood before a giant with a single rock, your enemies will fall before the presence of the Lord. The mountains themselves will melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. So open our eyes, God, and let us see our victory. Our victory is in your name, Jesus. The name above all with flesh and blood. But we put on strongholds, powers, and principalities but with the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's how we fight. Sing it one more time. We pull down every stronghold that the enemy has worked so hard to gain and to establish. We pull it down in a moment at the name of Jesus. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. like we're surrounded we just know that you're in the middle right there with us I'm sitting down here and I'm, listen there 
it's it's this moment right here is so important and and i'll tell you why i i'm sitting down here and i'm i'm thinking to myself you know what we're, we're churches and all over the, the United States, and, and we're good at showing up to the battle, but a lot of times we're, we're concerned with the wrong things when we get there. And, and you know, we're, we show up, and our shields may be shiny, and our swords may be sharp, but we're looking at the person next to us and more concerned that they got nicer sandals on than we do, and we're here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're here to fight a battle and we worry about the things of this world in the process. And, and I'm, I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to tell you that, that your way of th seeing things is wrong. What I'm here to do is tell you that there is a battle laying before us. And if we want to do battle in, in that war, we're going to have to learn to fight. And the way we fight is we worship. We worship with everything inside of us, not worrying about what's on our back, not worrying about the labels on our clothes, not worrying about the car we've got in the parking lot or how shiny it is or if we got the good parking place so people can see it when they come in the parking lot. I, we, we're here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we're here to see infirmities fall. We're here to see chains let go, addictions removed. We're here to pray for victory, like, like a gentleman we've got on the back row back here yeah. who two weeks ago we weren't even sure was going to be able to be out of the hospital, but he's sitting on the back row right now. And yeah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I have a family member who prayed for for cancer and it wasn't some amazing surgery that freed him it was a room in the corner of the hospital where praise music was ringing out all over the hospital floor and doctors were coming and telling him to turn it down and they they wouldn't turn down the praise music and he walked out of there a week later with clean scans look we worship because it sets our people free we don't worship just to make noise. We don't worship just to sing or be seen singing. We worship because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of it. And Lord, we show up to the battle. And I don't care if my shield has a few scuffs on it because it's seen some things. I'm not worried that my sword has a few nicks in it because it's seen a battle before. I'm not worried that I'm not wearing the nicest thing because, God, I don't care about any of that. I just want you, Lord. I want you in my life. I want to make sure that my children know that church is my top priority. I want you to know that my children know that, that I'm a giver and I'm a tither because I believe in the blessings of God being poured out and I believe in being that example for them. God, I want your church to come alive Amen. and people will always run from the battle but I know somebody bigger and stronger so whatever you're facing this morning whatever you're going through whatever you came through these doors thinking was reality I want you to walk out of there different because I want you to know that if you will yell your praise to the heavens that the armies of God will surround you and when, no matter what you're dealing with when the demons come back limping because they're like, you know, they're, they're like we wanted to cause some problems this morning but the angels showed up We were there to cause some issues. We were there to pick a fight, but something got in our way. It is the people of God willing to praise and worship our way through any situation. So I want to sing that again, and I want you to stop worrying about everything else that's going on in your life. Don't worry about what you got to do in a few minutes. It's time to fight a battle, and this battle is at your doorstep. So I want you to fight with me. Let's fight like we've never fought before. Raise your hands towards heaven and just, if you need to move out of your seat, if you need to find a place in this altar, if you need to move around, dance, do whatever you've got to do, because I'm telling you, when you're standing before the throne of God, I don't want you to have any regrets from this life. 
don't have any regrets from holding back and saying, I wish I had praised harder. I wish I had praised you more, Lord. I wish I had taught my children what real praise looked like. I wish, God, I don't want to have any of those regrets. So let's, let's worship him this morning. Let the battle begin. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This song comes from Psalm 23. And part of that says that he anoints our head with oil and our cup runs over. Amen. Yeah. Let's just sing that. For you anoint my head with oil. And now my cup runs over. For you anoint my head with oil. Cup is overflowing. Now my cup is overflowing. You anoint my head with oil. Now my cup is overflowing. Lord, you anoint my head with oil. And now my cup. My cup is overflowing. Yes, my cup is overflowing. You've been so good, Lord. My cup is overflowing. Amen. Hasn't he been good? Thank you, Father, for being in this place today. Thank you for being with your people and doing battle with us, Lord God, standing with us. Lord, we just we just thank you, God, for, for being our provider, for being our God. We love you so much, Lord. In your mighty and powerful name, we pray. Amen. Put your hands together one more time. I'm going to let you sit down, but it's, I uh, at least look at somebody next to you and smile. Say good morning. <laughs> I uh, have a few announcements I want to make really quickly, and we will move on with what we've got going on today. First thing is, we've got baptisms next week, and uh, <laughs> we're going to have to dedicate some time to it because we've got a lot of baptisms next week, all right? Um, there have been a number of people, young people, um, adults, several that have come forward and they've said, you know what, I'm drawing a line in the sand in my life and God is doing something new and they want to get baptized again. We've got a few that are being baptized for the first time, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So if there's anybody else, the pool's going to be full, all right? You don't have to... Uh, you don't have to wait. This is a great opportunity. So, But I did want to mention, if you are getting baptized next week, please see me after service because we have some stuff that we want to give you and uh, to get ready for that. So if you would like to sign up to do that, just let me know, 
and uh, we can get you on the list. Also, connect cards right in front of you in the chair. If you are, if this is your first time being with us, just grab one of those connect cards out of the chair in front of you, fill that out, let us know who you are, and uh, we'd like to get to know you a little bit better. You can actually bring them out to me. I would love to meet you um, out here in the foyer. You can give it to myself, to Pastor David. We just want to shake your hand and, and know who you are, and so uh, please get those cards to us. And also, if you've not filled one out, but you've been coming for a little while, but you've never filled out one of those cards, we'd love for you to do that just so that we know who you are and have a little information so we can reach out to you about stuff that's going on in the church. All right. Prayer requests. Uh, we actually have a QR code in the uh, the handout that you got this morning, the communicator. It's the little trifold thing that we have. You can actually fill out a, a prayer request that way. There might actually be a tear-off in there. Patty has changed those forms, so look for the prayer request box. But please fill those out and let us know what's going on in your life because we do meet every week to pray. Uh, Pastor David and I sat on the front row right here on Wednesday, and we prayed over all the needs of this church, and, and we want to do that. We want to do that every week, so please let us know what's going on so that we can pray with you. All right, I think that's it. It's offering time, so we're going to take up an offering. That wasn't very good. Yeah, it's offering time. Come on, y'all can do better than that. That's right. All right. So I'm going to have these gentlemen stand right here. I, um, I want to share this with you. I was talking with one of the youth um, not too long ago, and uh, they were asking about we were talking about a song that they had on their phone that I wanted, and I had my iPad, and they're like, here, I'll just airdrop it to you. I'm like, what? What is that? So they, uh, like, do some crazy funky thing, and then all of a sudden, I have it on my iPad, and I'm like, that's sorcery. I don't know what that is, but that's just not right. That's magic, and uh, I rebuke you, Satan. All right, but... It got me thinking, and we got into this conversation about music and how it's evolved over the years. When I was born, now this will date me a little bit, but when I was born, eight tracks and records were the thing, okay? And it wasn't shortly, it was shortly thereafter that cassette tapes became the thing. And then it wasn't too long after that, we got to CDs, and now then MP3s and all that, and now apparently just sorcery. The, they just appear. <laughs> I don't know. How they get there, I don't know where they come from, but amen, I've got the song. So, uh, But, you know, I was telling them when I was young and I wanted to copy a song for a friend, I had to go home and get out my two-bay cassette player, right, put in a blank one, and uh, yeah, and, and listen to, you had to listen to it. You couldn't do it in high speed. I mean, you know, you had to listen to the song while, and record it. And then you got to the end and you took it out. But, but the thing that, that struck me the other day, I was thinking about this. The thing that struck me was when you make a copy and then you make a copy of a copy and a copy of a copy, it starts to get really poor quality all of a sudden. And uh, my vanilla ice tape just didn't sound good anymore, you know. <laughs> Because you, you start uh, seeing that. And, uh, you know, the more copies you make, the more the quality goes down. And that is that is what I want to tell you this morning. We are a generation that is watching the wrong thing and trying to copy it. We are watching people on our social media feeds and we're getting jealous of things that we see in other people and we want the things that they have and the funny thing is is that the people that we are being jealous over and trying to achieve the things that they have and do the things that they're doing is not even real what you're seeing on your real r-e-e-l is not real r-e-a-l okay you're you're Thumbing through all this stuff, and we're not seeing what's real. It's all for entertainment. It's for our benefit. And you know what? I'm standing on Romans 12 too. I will not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are not going to get there trying to copy the behaviors of other people who are not even being real. And so when we're talking about giving this morning... We're talking about, you know, taking up an offering. And, and here's the funny thing. If you want your children to be givers, they need to see you being a giver. 
They need to have an example in their life that they can copy. When, when we go on vacation, there's nothing wrong with going on vacation. Hallelujah. I love a vacation. I would love to take one. Y'all can send me on one anytime you want, all right? I will go. Thank you. Praise Jesus. But when you're doing it every weekend and you're doing something instead of church, your children will copy that behavior, and I promise you that will be more important than church. When you have things that you need to buy and you stop giving your tithe check because that thing has become more important, they will copy that behavior. So I want us to be copying the right thing. Ephesians 5.1 says to be imitators of God, not imitators of influencers on social media. So I want you guys to be an example to the young people. And I'll be completely honest. Our youth group is awesome. They're an example to most of us. And I, I think it's incredible. But when we're talking about giving this morning, I just want to challenge you. Give because God has asked us to do that in order to be faithful. Give to be blessed. Give so that your family will be blessed. But give also because we have an example in Jesus who gave. We have an example in the disciples who gave. We have examples in all of the people that have gone before us that have built the churches that we're standing in today. And we need to do those things because that's what God has set an example for us to be. So I want you guys to just take your offering. We're going to pray a prayer of blessing over it. I want everybody to stand up one more time because I like making you do it. <laughs> it's all right. And uh, just hold that offering in your hand and just say, thank you, Father, for these blessings that you have poured out on me so that I can bless others. God, we just thank you for the people today, God, that are walking into this place. They are doing amazing things for you. And the gift that they're giving this morning will allow us to do things in this church, in this community, around the world. God, I know that this gift that's coming forward this morning has big, big plans. And God, I just pray that you multiply it in ways that we never could. And I pray that you bless the people in ways that we never could. And Lord, I just thank you for their hearts. Thank you for them being an example to the young people of today, being an example for their peers, being an example for the people of the church and outside the church. And Lord, we just thank you for it in your precious and mighty name. Amen. So if you will, just take that offering. You can walk it down and drop it in one of these buckets right here. And if you give online, we thank you for it. And in just a minute, we're going to have some announcements on the screen. What's up, everybody? So happy to see y'all this morning. My name is McKendry. I'm a ministry intern here at New Covenant, and this is what's up next. Just go to ncwc.org and click the Connect Groups banner to check out all the groups we have to offer. Don't miss this great opportunity. It's a wonderful way to get connected within the church, to build your relationship with Jesus, to get to know one another as a church family. Do you own or run a small business or know somebody who does? Well, we believe you are the backbone of our community and we want to invest in your dreams. So this Saturday, September 18th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., right here at New Covenant, we're going to have three great speakers coming to talk about building amazing teams, building your online presence, and building your customer satisfaction. We're going to offer free breakfast and it'll be a great time to network and collaborate with other business leaders from our community. In order to register, go to ncwc.org and click on the Small Business Symposium banner. Love to see you there. 
just a minute, Pastor David is going to come and share practical teaching from Scripture. As you arrive, you should have received a communicator, and inside are notes where you can follow along, fill in the blanks, and make your own notes during the service. You can also follow along during the message on the YouVersion app. Our prayer team has already prayed for you that God will speak to you in a life-changing way today. We are so glad you're here. on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up with what's happening during the week. I love y'all. My name's McKendry, and you just found out what's up next. Amen. Good to see y'all today. Uh, if you got your Bibles, we are in Ephesians. We're going to uh, continue on with our uh, series that we are in, and uh, today is a, there's some big text out of today's uh, message. So are you ready? Hello. I feel like I'm in a tunnel now. I like, uh, there's an echo, sorry. Uh, I get a squirrel. I get distracted kind of quick. Uh, we're going to look at Ephesians. Uh, wherever, where I left off last week, we're going to go as far as we can, and we'll do that every week, making no promises. We're just going to go as far as we can. But I really want to encourage you today. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a good time in the Word today. Amen. How many believe it's going to be a good time in the Word? I want to see you built up and encouraged in your faith today. Let me just do this real quick as just thinking of encouraging you. Uh, you may have noticed Pastor Keith has been out. Uh, there's some other folks, Chris. So the, you know, the COVID has kind of picked us, seems like, this past couple of weeks and running through a lot of our folks and our staff. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's part of the world we live in now. And, you know, we deal with it. You and I'm not making a political statement or a vaccination statement. If you want to get vac vaccinated, fine. If you don't, fine. It's, it, but, I mean, COVID's here. You probably get it at some point, and we deal with it. Uh, what I want to just tell you, church, is to keep moving. I just want to tell you, keep moving forward. There was a word that we spoke a while back out of Jeremiah 12, and it, it just is... I was talking with Sarah uh, the other day, our, our prayer team leader, and uh, this is just the resounding word that we, we sense of the Lord. And it, and it says, if you, have, if you have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you run with horses? And so I just want to encourage you in the context of the pandemic or anything in life, Look, there's going to be hurdles that you've got to jump over. There's going to be uh, obstacles that you may have to push out of the way or figure out how to get around. But don't stop. Don't cower down. Don't lay down in fear. Keep moving forward in your life. Because this is not the biggest thing that, there's going, that we're going to see. I, I, I st we still get reports of the church in Afghanistan, and it is so encouraging and daunting on the other hand. The believers, since, since we have pulled out, there's been so much persecution on the church in Afghanistan, and the church is exploding. People, the believers over there figure, well, I'm probably going to die, so I'm going to use the time I have to share my faith and as rescue as many people as I can and usher them into the kingdom. And the church in Afghanistan has blown up since we pulled our troops out of there. Yes. And so what I'm telling you is COVID is not the biggest thing we're going to face. So let's keep moving forward. Let's keep putting one foot in front of the other because God has called us in the future. There's going to be greater things that we're going to face, greater obstacles. And when we do, God has called the church to be able to run with the horses. He's given us feet like a deer that we can run through a troop and climb over a wall, that we can, that we can go to mountaintops. Amen? So keep moving. Look at somebody and say, just keep moving. I know you lose your energy and you can't hardly breathe. Just get outside and take a few steps. Keep moving. Amen. Glory to God. That's the word. Keep moving forward. Because there's coming a day when we're going to run with horses. 
So we, uh, let me just quickly review, if you weren't here last week, or just catch us up. Uh, a couple of points we made out of the text last week uh, in Ephesians, uh, Paul said, first of all, and, and I don't want you to forget this, I'm not kidding about this, Paul said to the saints in Ephesus, okay, so there is no person, there is no institution that can confer sainthood on us. Amen? We're not Catholics here. Amen? There is no institution, there is no person that can confer sainthood on us. It is only the love of Jesus that confers sainthood on all us believers. Praise God. St. David, talking to you. Okay, so, but we need, to, we need to get that in us and own us, own that because that truth disarms the lies and the condemnation and the, and the deception of our spiritual enemy. He comes up and tries to beat you over the head with lies and tell you that you're not good enough, you don't deserve this, and you need to know that because of the love of Jesus and the blood of Christ, you are a saint. You need to remind the devil of that whenever he comes to condemn you. You are a Okay, we need to, st- st- we need to, like Patrick said, we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to let that renew our minds and disarm our enemy. And the other thing I think was a, a powerful point is that we have already been given every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Every spiritual blessing that we need has already been provided for us by Christ. Amen and amen. So let's jump in. I think we left off around 9 or 10. So let's jump in at verse 11 today and keep going through. In verse 11, here we go. In him, meaning Christ, also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined. There's that word that us Arminians are afraid of because we're afraid the Calvinists are going to bash us with it. But let's not be scared of that word. He has predestined us according to the purpose of him who works all things. Everybody say all things. He works all things. God can work all things, anything, everything, good things, bad things, in between things. He works all things according to the counsel of his will. I think the argument of predestination, Calvinism, and all that is just, that just simply stems from our inability to understand God. There are some things we're not going to be able to comprehend, and we have to commit to the Lord. This is one of those things. Don't ask me how he does it. I don't know how he does it. I just know that he is a master, a sovereign artist at orchestrating events in our life, good or bad, whether they were a result of our decision or whether they're a result of his sovereignty or whether they're a result of the natural sequence of things. Whatever the the origination of the thing is, God is a master artist at working all things to the counsel of his will. Amen? Amen? So, and that's exactly what Paul says. He works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be be to the praise of his glory. It's very reminiscent of Paul's verse in Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work. We quote this one more than this verse in Ephesians. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So God works, again, he, he's God, okay? Like we need to get that down in us. He's God. We, we need to commit some things we don't understand to him. He's God. Because of that, he can work all things according to his will. I find that truth both comforting and troubling at the same time. It's comforting on one hand because I know he's sovereign and, he's, and I know he's good. Because I know he's good and he's sovereign, it, it brings much comfort to my heart knowing he can do whatever he wants to. And on one hand, I'm okay with that. On the other hand, it's a little bit troubling when hard times come, when there's pain in my life, when there's uh, confusing situations that I've prayed for and they're not working out like I had hoped or believed for. 
And in that day, I still know he's working all things out to the counsel of his will. Can I be honest? That's troubling. Amen? I mean, I don't know if y'all have ever had a bad day and you think, God, what are you doing? Where are you at? Did you hear me? Did you, I mean, I've been praying. Hey, I've been, I got some credit in heaven, right? I've been fasting hard. I mean, I'm dying here. And where are you, you know, have y'all ever been there? Anybody ever had those days where you're just like, what is going on? I thought God was on my side. And yet, it seems like every demon in hell is, is, is getting a sucker punch in on me. Anybody ever, just wave your hand if you've ever had those days where your faith and the reality of your life seem to be at odds with one another. So the truth that God can work all things according to the counsel of his will is comforting on the good days, but on the bad days, it, it leaves a big question mark over our lives. But here's what I want to tell you, and this is as your pastor, if you haven't had dark days and nights of the soul, you will. If you have, you know what I'm talking about. There's going to be troubling days. There's going to be troubled, troubled seasons in life. And when you go through those as believers, we're going to have to decide to trust him. Trust that goes beyond our ability to understand it. That there's going to come days when you don't understand things that are happening in your life, and you're going to have to simply, by decision, not feeling, but by decision, commit that unto the Lord. Say, God, I don't understand it. I don't like it. I'm frustrated. I'm hurting. And yet, I know that you are good, and I know that you work all things according to the counsel of your will, so I commit this hell that I'm going through to you, and I trust you. And I want to tell you, church, that the day, the season that you go through when it's what's called the dark night of the soul, and you trust him through that valley, that is some of the highest forms of worship that we can give to our God. He knows you don't understand it. He knows you're hurting, and yet he looks down and sees that you're trusting him with that in that. Come on, that is some of the highest seasons, highest days, highest forms of praise and worship that we can give our God. It's not on the good days. It's when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, and yet we still fear no evil because we know that he is with us. Even when he has to pull out his rod and his staff, it comforts us nonetheless. That's the highest praise we get to give him. So don't reject it. Don't question it. I mean, we don't welcome it, but when it happens, let's walk through it with our hands lifted up and say, God, I trust you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And he says this in verse 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were, and I love this, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, and this is what this seal, what this guarantee does for us, what it means for us. He says in verse 14, it is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So in other words, one of the benefits of our salvation, one of the benefits of the subsequent salvation experience being baptized in the Holy Spirit is that we are energized in our confidence of Christ's return. That we, that we have great confidence because of the residing presence of the Holy Spirit in us that energizes us and gives us great confidence in the return of our Lord. Like, what does that mean? So I thought of this this week in, in regards to the pandemic, and, and, and I don't want to be insensitive, but look, like, it's a pandemic and folks are dying, right? But as believers, there's a, there's a greater reality at play for us as believers. I hate to lose loved ones. I just celebrated the, the passing of my mom this, pa uh, this past week. It's, a, it's a something I'll never forget, and yet I have an inheritance as a saint of God that goes beyond this earthly existence. It goes into eternity. I have a greater hope. 
I'm going to see her again. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. I mean, there is greater glory awaiting me on the other side of the chasm of death. And that's a reality. That needs to be a reality for us as believers. Amen? So when people, I mean, there are people who have passed. And the thing that I guess, it's like there's, it's, we have so politicized, we have so uh, criticized this. I mean, it is such a hot topic, hot button in our culture. Somebody dies of COVID, like, and, and that's what they say. Well, did they die of COVID? And, and like, like that's, that's all I've heard in conversations where there's critical care and, you know, s- subsequently somebody passes. They died of COVID. They died of COVID. And I just want to, as a believer, say, okay, that's, that's tragic. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry. But did they know Jesus? That's the issue. COVID's not the issue. Jesus is the issue. Did they know him? Because regardless of what ushered them through the passage of death, the greatest and the most important point is, do they know him? If they don't, that's what's tragic. But if they do, then they have an inheritance waiting on them that has been guaranteed because God sent the Holy Spirit who now lives in us, and we know it's true because he's in us. He's in me. He's in you if you've received him. Amen? So there is a... Greater than, I thought of it, I, I go on a, a jog on Sunday mornings, and, and the, the Lord spoke this to me this morning. Uh, speaking of our inheritance, can we, just, can we just kind of make fun of the devil? Like, I like to talk about how stupid he is from time to time. Is that okay? Like, can we just point our finger at him and, you know, make fun of him? Like, we can, let's do that a little bit. So, I, the Lord just reminded me this morning, uh, thinking of our inheritance that is ours through Christ Jesus. You remember in, Mar- in Matthew 4, when Jesus was on a 40-day fast, pre- preparing, leading up to uh, the beginning of his earthly ministry. He's on this extended fast. He's, he's, he's alone in the wilderness, and, and the devil comes after him. Everybody remember this story? The devil's and, he's, and he begins to tempt him. He's tempting him with food. One of the temptations that he brings to Messiah is he brings him to this high place and he says, look, all of the kingdoms of the world I'll give to you if you just worship me. How dumb. You can't give what you don't own. It's not his to give. And furthermore, if we put two and two together, Paul says, it's not just Jesus's, but Jesus's intent was to give it to us. It's our inheritance. So what the devil mistakenly tried to give to Jesus, I'm seeing Jesus just chuckled a little bit inside and said, you have no idea. You are such an idiot. You can't give me what I already own, and because I already own it, I'm giving it to all my kids anyway when I redeem it. So the thing that the enemy tried to give to Jesus, which wasn't his to give, Jesus says he's given to us. It's our inheritance. The kingdoms of the earth are ours on his return. Yes and amen. Look at somebody and say, the devil is dumb. He's just so dumb. It's one of the benefits. It's one of the things that we have to inherit as, as, to inherit as believers. Let's keep going. Verse 15. Therefore, Paul, Paul says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Uh, this is something I, I feel like is far too uncommon, uh, particularly among church leaders. Paul does something that is so wonderful. It, it's a reminder for me to be grateful for you, to be thankful for what God is, has done and what God is doing in, in your lives. It's, it's, so, it's so common and it's tragic, but I, I, I mean, I get with pastors every week and we talk and we pray, and, I, and inevitably, a lot of times, it's just negative junk. Like, they're negative. They say, I'm dealing with this, and I've got this. You know, it's like, so we're praying, and we're trying to encourage each other. But, but here, I'm reminded what Paul does. Paul says, I'm not griping and complaining about the folks that I'm leading. I am grateful. 
I'm thankful for you guys. And I just want to tell you that as your pastor, like this passage reminds me of how blessed I am to be your pastor. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for Jack. I'm th Jack, I'm thankful for your faith. The fight and the battles that you have gone through and the faith that you retain in Christ, I, am th you can, I, I bet I could have a conversation with Jack and I can make him cry in 30 seconds. <laughs> but he's that sensitive to what God is. I, like, Jack, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for Ken. I'm thankful for Ken's heart to help people. It's such a blessing. It, Ken challenges me to, to minister to people, to give stuff away to people when I see them on the side of the road. I'm thankful for you, Ken. I'm thankful for Diane. I'm thankful for all she does, how she blesses the kingdom of God, how she serves in the kingdom of God. Like, I am so thankful. I'm thankful for Pastor Howell, a man of great stature in the kingdom, yet who submits to the leadership of this church and serves here and teaches here and pours into the people here. I am thankful. I'm thankful for Daryl Brock. He's here this morning. He loves God. He loves the people of God. He may be quiet, but I am thankful for the steadfastness of his faith. I'm, I'm thankful for Miss B sitting in the back. You talk about somebody who's gone through seasons of dark nights of the soul and has retained her resiliency and her trust in the Lord. She is a giant in the kingdom of God. She may only stand about this tall when you walk up to her, but in heaven she's going to be crowned with many crowns that I suspect she's going to lay at the feet of Jesus. I'm thankful for Miss B. What a blessing in this house. I'm thankful for Mr. Billy. Back in the back row, he's a rock. He's not just a rock. I mean, that man worked hard Physical labor for years, many, many more years than most could even endure for a short time. He worked his whole lifetime. But I think that just represents his spiritual life. Spiritually speaking, Mr. Billy is a rock. I know he does. I'm, I'm sure every day is not the best day, but you would never know it. He carries the joy of the Lord. He carries a steadfastness about him that just you know he's going he's gonna to come in and he's going to be exactly who he was last week. He's going to be that same person next week. Listen, I'm thankful for you, Brother Billy. And all of you, I am thankful for. I'm thankful for your love for Christ. I'm thankful for your love for each other. And we need more of that. Amen? Listen, can I tell you something? I'm not going to go out of here and complain about you to other pastors. I'm telling other pastors how awesome you are. What a blessing and privilege it is for me to lead you and to serve you. Like, I, sometimes we get in that room and they're like, oh, what do you want us to pray for? I'm like, we're good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it, it's a blessing to be your pastor. Verse 17, he continues on. He says, that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, and this is, this is the meat, the heart of of the passage today may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints this is a prayer that paul is praying for these believers in ephesus and I just want to give you some, maybe some, a practical tip. This prayer that he prays right here in verses 17, 18, and 19, I would encourage you to uh, highlight it, write it on note cards. This is a powerful biblical prayer that you can pray for two groups of people. First of all, for, the, for lost loved ones. This is, I found this to be a great prayer to pray for those who, who I'm concerned about don't know the Lord. That, that I'm praying that the eyes, of their, the, the, the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. In other words, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit of God would intercept their life and unveil their blind vision to the reality of Jesus. I can't argue them into the kingdom. I can't convince them into the kingdom. But it takes the presence and power of God to, to, to enlighten their hearts to their own need for a Savior and to the, to the free gift that the Savior is. So that's a great prayer to pr pray for an unsaved person and 
for a saved person to continue to grow in their maturity. I'm praying for, for, your, for you to be enlightened, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would, would reveal truths of God to you so that you grow and you grow and you become more mature. Amen? Amen. So this is, the, this is the deal. I think I've told you this, but like I can tell you God loves you, but you won't get it until the spirit of God reveals that to you. I can tell you that Jesus died for your sins, but it doesn't mean anything until the Holy Spirit of God convicts you of your sin. This prayer hits that nail on the head. It's say, Paul's saying, I'm praying that the Spirit of the living God will do what my words can't do. That it will reveal to the listener, reveal to the one I love what God's plans and purposes are for their life. That the spirit of wisdom and revelation would come on them. Re the process of revelation is like, uh, it's, 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 revelation literally means an uncovering or unveiling. And that is what God does for us. He's not hiding the truth. It's just that we have in some areas been covered up and we can't see. So what the Holy Spirit does is he comes in and he removes that blanket so that we can see the truth that is already exposed and out there. So when we pray for revelation, we're saying, God, would you, would you take that covering off so they can see? And when they see clearly, they'll have a better ability to make the right choice. Amen? So, you, so that's what you're praying that prayer. God, take that covering off so that they can see. And when they see, they'll get it. Amen? So revelation is the process of the Holy Spirit uncovering veiled hearts so that they can see the truth. And not only is that, but uh, if we're going to cover this in chapter 3, but, but Paul's praying this prayer for the believer. He's saying, I'm praying that your eyes will be enlightened, your, your hearts will understand. The spirit of wisdom and revelation will, will come on you so that you understand the truths of God. In chapter 3, he's going to go on to say that the purpose of the church is to declare the manifold wisdom of God to powers and principalities. So we first have to have the truth of God revealed to us by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And then he's going to give us the charge. Now, now that we understand what God's plans and purposes are, let's go forth as the church and let's declare the manifold wisdom of God to powers and principalities of the air, powers of darkness. Let's declare the, re the revealed truths of God to those things that are at work against us. When I preach, I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to powers and principalities of the air, and I am declaring the manifold wisdom of God in this area. Uh, matter of fact, I firmly believe that the level of, of darkness, the, the, to the degree that the kingdom of darkness has authority in the area, has, it has only been given that authority because of the local church. We have the power as the church to declare the manifold wisdom of God over our city and push back the kingdom of darkness. Amen. So God wants us to know it first, and then he wants us to make it known. To know it first and then make it known. Now let's continue. He says, and, and in his prayer, he continues and says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. We were just singing that. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And in closing in this chapter, he says this, God the Father put all things under Jesus, the Son's feet. And he gave Jesus to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels all in all. The crowning achievement of the gospel is that God, in his, in his work through his Son, set him above all things. So when the enemy came and said, I'll give you the kingdoms of the earth to Jesus. He was set above all the kingdoms of the earth. They were 
already his. But he didn't stop there. He didn't just set Jesus over all things. He redeemed the church to become the body of Christ, the body of the one who was set over all things, so that now we are included and we have authority over things. Amen? And this is where I want to encourage you, to challenge you, to push you, to lead you to, is that we are the body of Christ, and we have the authority of Christ. Amen? We have the authority to bind and loose things on the earth that are as they are in heaven. We have authority to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, down to the earth. Amen? Is the church perfect? No. Good Lord, look at the Methodists right now. I mean, they're about to kill each other over a stupid issue. And while they're fighting, what I want us to, to, to have in front of our eyes is the mission and the purpose of God. We're not going to get caught up in all these side issues. There's too much to do. There's too many people to love. There's too many needs to heal. There's too many hurts to fix. There's too many uh, people in our community that need Jesus. We're not going to get sidetracked on these silly issues. We are the body of Christ. Well, what does that mean? What does that look like? Just look at what Jesus did in the gospel. He never got political. He never got sidetracked by issues. He just administered the kingdom of God wherever he went. He healed hurts. He met needs. He loved people. He preached the kingdom of God. That's what we're going to do as the body of Christ. Amen? Too much to do to get caught up in all that silliness, right? Look at somebody that says too much to do. Too much to do. We're the body of Christ. We're going to live like it. We're going to love like it. We're going to share like it. We're going to work like it. We are the body of Messiah on the earth. And so I'm going to close with this today that my prayer is, is exactly what Paul prayed, that, that the, the Spirit of God would touch your life and would reach you in a way that, that my words can't, but that he would meet you right where you are and, and he would touch your heart and, and maybe, maybe uncover some things, maybe pull something off of you that was previously, you, you didn't see it that way. One of, one of the amazing things about the scriptures is the number of times I read passages I've read all my life and that work of the Holy Spirit, that revealing work pulls a, a blinder off of my eyes that was previously there, and he, he uncovers my eyes, and I see something. It's the same words on the same page that I've read many times, and yet the Spirit of God just uncovers a truth that I've never seen before. That's the revelatory work of the Spirit of God in our lives. And that's what I'm praying. I'm praying that he will do in your heart what, what human words can't, that he would uncover to you the truths the manifold wisdom of God, the revelation of the scriptures so that it becomes real to you. Amen? Amen. Would you bow your heads? I just want to pray for you as we get ready to close. And as I get ready to pray, I just want to ask the Holy Spirit just to move among us, to search our hearts, to move throughout this room, to move among those who may be watching online, God is not bound by time or space. There may be people that will watch online later on this week. And I'm praying the same prayer, that at that point in time, that moment, that the Holy Spirit will do the work that only he can do. So, Father, I pray in this moment that you will enlighten us, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. It's not the the wisdom, the words of preaching, but that it's the work, the power, the revealing power of the Holy Spirit on our hearts. Holy Spirit, go and move, uncover, unveil, reveal your love. Reveal your love to your people. Reveal your love to those who have yet to receive it. Those who don't know how to receive love. Those who don't know how to receive the free gift. Reveal to them how much you love them, how you have pursued them, how you have chosen them, that they're not here by accident. They're not here as a result of circumstances that they are divinely purposed to be here today. 
Reveal to their hearts your love. Reveal to the hearts of believers your authority, the kingdom, their inheritance. Reveal to the hearts of believers, I pray, O oh Lord, the wisdom and the revelation of our inheritance and glory so that the end result will be that you take away the sting and the fear of death in this life. Let us walk without, the te without being tethered to this temporary place, but let us see ourselves as ambassadors and as citizens of a heavenly kingdom that is to come. Holy Spirit, I pray you will reveal the wisdom, the manifold wisdom of God first to us, and then as we see it, we will go and make it known to those in our lives. I thank you for it. With every head bowed and every eye closed, listen, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to what the Spirit of God may be doing in your heart. If you're here and you say, Pastor David, that's me. God's dealing with me. He's showing me. He's, he's revealing things to me. New steps I need to take. New, new levels of faith and trust. Would you just lift your hand where you are? I just I want to pray for you. I see those hands. It may be a, a, a step of salvation. You may say, hey, listen, I've gone to church. I've been in church. I, I'm a pretty good person. But today God is showing me my need for a Savior. He's showing me that he wants to love me and rescue me out of this place I'm in. That he wants to make me a saint in his kingdom. If that's you, would you raise your hand and say, that's me. He's showing me that I need his son. Amen. God bless you. Father, you see those hands that have gone up. You see every hand, every intent, every purpose, every response of every heart. I pray that you would do what you promised, that the step of salvation, step of faith, step of trust, that you will seal it by the power of your Holy Spirit today. We thank you for it. We thank you for the work of the Spirit of God in every life. And we give you thanks and praise in your name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, I'm going to ask, uh, I don't know if Pastor Patrick or Pastor Howell wants to come, but I'm just going to ask him as we close to, to speak this prayer over you as a blessing. Amen? There's something powerful when you pray. There's something even more powerful when you pray the Scriptures of God. And so I'm going to just ask him to come and and just pray Ephesians 1, 17, 18, 19 as a blessing over you. And so I encourage you just to receive this as a blessing in your life. Amen. Well, can we just stand together as we get ready to dismiss? And uh, we're going to pray this. Heavenly Father, thank you for every person that's walked in these doors. Thank you for every family that's here. Lord, I pray for closeness and connection, God. I pray that we are able to go out of these doors as new creatures, Lord, and that we're able to follow in your footsteps. So as we pray this prayer, Father, that Paul wrote to the Ephesians, Lord, I just, I just pray that it becomes our prayer, that this prayer just permeate our, our souls, Father. And as he prayed, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Father, we just praise you this morning, and we thank you for this prayer that was prayed so many years ago. It is still true today, just like it was then. And Father, we pray that you bless these people this week. Help them to be a light in their community and a light in their homes. Lord, we just love you and we praise you and your precious name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week. We will see y'all at Connect Groups this week, and uh, we will see you next Sunday.